in the previous video, um, we modeled the wings for the bat and set them up with cloth to sort of illustrate one way of uh, animating them once they're actually rigged. Uh, with the idea that we can create these sort of flaps and that the cloth will do the work. Uh, in this video, I want to uh, I want to go ahead and UV map this uh, bat before we go and rig it in order to set up the UVs and get the textures sort of set up. Uh, and then we can talk about where we'll go from there in terms of the bone rig. You can tell right now with the subdivision surfaces that are on this bat, the subdivision surface modifier, that um, the fingers are pulling or kind of bending because of the way they're rigged or because of that subdivision, the way it's set to smooth. You can change that from this Catmull Clark option in the subdivision surface to just simple. And then that way you won't lose the um, subdivision position or the, where we've placed the rings for the joints, uh, which is something that uh, I did went ahead and sort of went forward and tested out the cloth to see if it was going to be worth doing that. And here it is where it's rigged. And you can see up in the finger joints where the cloth, uh, the bones break because of the way they're, they're averaging on the smooth. Uh, this is something we can fix, but just to show you that the cloth works, it kind of looks pretty good in terms of being that leathery bat wing. Um, so this is a rigged, the bat rigged with uh, a rubbery cloth setting. Um, and yeah, it's not perfect because the fingers, like I said, the bones themselves break through the cloth and don't show, but that was just an error on my part in terms of the rigging. Uh, so we can do better. Uh, that's why I kind of went forward. I wanted to test the process to get it going. So the same thing on this wing is we can just, uh, if we change it from Catmull Clark to Simple, we get the subdivision, uh, which you can see if I turn on the wireframe, we get the subdivision, but it's still positioned relative to the finger bone, which is what we want to do when we set this up, because the cloth will smooth this out. Uh, and we can smooth it out after the fact. But the one thing we don't want to lose is the position of the um, guide wire, or the pinning points and the finger joints themselves. Because if we do that, then we're going to lose. Uh, it'll start to blend and it won't match up. So for the purpose of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to scale this thing down to its actual size. Go ahead and UV map. Uh, to get it set up for texturing, and then in the next video, we'll work on the bones. But before we can scale this thing down, we need to go ahead, or, or rig it for that matter, we need to go ahead and uh, apply these, or first, lose the subdivision surfaces. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of the subdivision surface modifier on the wings, and we'll get rid of the subdivision surface modifier, and I'm just clicking on X here on the um, body. We would take these two, um, go ahead and select object and join to treat them as one object. And then from there, we can go into uh, transform properties and scale them down to uh, one, I believe, because I've gone and scaled this up. Original. So here's an F. Here's the actual bat size. So you can see it's still, this is a meter, um, still about a foot or longer. Vampire bat would probably be smaller. I'm going to leave it at this size um, just for the sake of uh, scaling. Uh, or, or we can always go a little bit smaller in the game engine uh, after the fact. Let's go ahead and get into the UV mapping now. So we're at, uh, in order, since we scaled this for you, since I already had scaled it up bigger, and you want to be at 1, 1 in the dimensions. You want to keep the uh, position 0 relative. So select the object, object, go ahead and apply all transforms. And that way, uh, anything that you've done um, scale-wise won't show up in the UV mapping because 
this thing has a weird spell if it's, if it's position on its body or whatever is off. Uh, when you got to do a UV unwrap, the UV unwrap will occur in an odd way. So uh, just to point out, one of the things that I have done, let me go and set this up to render wireframe here. So in the, uh, in the between the two videos where we modeled the wings, I've gone and added teeth and gums in, uh, to the mouth. It was one of those things that was missing. And you could also add claws. Uh, would add claws eh, before we go. I don't have them in this, so I'm going to leave them off for now. It's an object that we could come back and attach later to the feet and to the um, thumb joint here, I guess. Uh, if you wanted to show it, I'll just show you how to do it real quick. Go on to edit and just select a face here. We can do an uh, inset face like that. And then we extrude, pull that forward. And let's see, rotate. Down. Another extrude. So you can see, like, we can pull on the edge while it's the slime here. Just to kind of create the claw, and we can pull the thumb down. That you can see where I'm clipping on this. Uh, when I zoom in, all you have to do is go to the view up here and set your clip start to be something smaller than uh, just until it stops clipping. I've got it 0.01, but that's not enough, so let's do 0 0.05. So you just kind of set your clock this way, and then you can scale this face small. And you can pull the long back. Maybe scale this in. So you end up getting like a claw that way, or his hook. You could do the same thing on the toes. Um, since I don't have mirror, no, I did get mirrored. I still have my mirror set up. Let me try this. Let me check that. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I haven't applied it yet. Okay, so in that case, we can go ahead and believe that. That was pretty good. And we can put some toes toe claws on real quick, so While I'm in mirror mode, to save myself some work later, notice I've got these, I think I mentioned this in the previous video, these triple rings at the joints. I don't have those on the um, bones for the, the wings, and I want those because those are going to definitely bend, and I don't want the wings collapsing. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the line or uh, loop cut tool here. Just get it centered so that it's on the right bone, and then pull that to the joint. So I get triple rings at each joint. It's going to be in the center, and you just hold and drag. And just Now we've got our claws, teeth, everything's good. All right, so we'll go back out. 
All right, back to the UV mapping now. So we've got this thing joined and scaled to the right side. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Um, now we want to, in order to UV map this thing, we have to select seams and then break it apart in pieces. So for now, I'm going to select the entire wing. Oh wait, we've got to take off the modifier now. So go back to object mode. Thing is joined, and then mirror modifier. And instead of turning it off, let's apply it. Now we have a joined model. Um, there's no modifier, so it's one contiguous model, and it's joined down the middle. That way we can select these edges and do the UV mapping. We probably could have left the mirror modifier on there, but um, for the purposes of making sure everything exported and not to run into issues later after we've already gone through and done a bunch of editing, and since we're technically done modeling, uh, so we've got the joints in there, um, I figured we'd go ahead and apply the, the mirror modifier. Um, all right, so for UV mapping, you can go into edit mode. Well, first, yeah, let's go into edit mode. We'll hide, select, you hit, uh, select the face on the wing, and then you can go under select, and there's this uh, more or less. Select more, it'll just grow. You can basically just hit the arrow key until every part of the wing is selected. Sometimes if you do, there's another way to do it where you can just say select with the bracket and it'll select everything, but it may miss because when you do that bracket, it's um, selecting length and it may break at the um, cut points like wherever we've got seams that we've applied but in this case it did them all so since we've got them all selected we'll go ahead and make under the um, vertex we're going to go ahead and assign the wings to that so that we can come back and select okay now if we go under mesh and hide we can hide the selected so we can just work on splitting the UV map for the um, bat body. Now if you select by edge, uh, using the edge select option, double click on his neck. Make sure that you got the edge selected all the way around. And what we want to do is right click and mark as a seam so it becomes a red line. And when you mark something as a seam, that just means that it's going to split that part off as a separate island when we do our, uh, when we try to unwrap the UVs for it. Um, so we'll just do that for everything on the body here. We're going to mark this as a seam. Same for the other side. Uh, same thing for his hips. And I'm just doing it at the center of the joint. Since it'll wrap all the way around. Uh, same thing for your ankles. Now we've got that split. We'll get into how to uh, unwrap the um, toes here in a sec. Let's go ahead and work on the face more now. So first thing we want to do is get this mouth separated out. Let's just select the inner ring at the lips, or maybe, yeah, let's do it at the lips. Could do it inside behind the scene, but um, I like it. what's going to happen is if we do that inside ring, because it bends here, the unwrap's going to be a little odd. I think it'll be fine like this. So if we say mark scene for the inner mouth. Okay, um, we can go inside the mouth and think about how to split it apart. Save the tongue. 
let's go ahead and do Basically, I'm taking that seam to this line, but I've already got the seam of the edge of the mouth going. That seam. That should almost split out the entire tongue. If I take this part. Uh, I'm trying to figure out actually. This is the brief of the mouth. This is the tongue. Yeah. So let's go down to here. Mark so Now we have the tongue separated. Um, we may want to end up splitting it down the middle at some point, but I'm going to leave it for now. Let's go across the gum line. No, that's not this one. And. Basically, trying to select this ring along the teeth that I made for the gums to split that part out as well. Then we have the top of the gum line right here. And this is the front. Inside of the gun, actually. I'll just deselect it by control clicking on that. I'm going to get this part. I'm going to get this ring up here so that it wraps. So it'll come from here. I'll click to here. Basically, I'm just taking the teeth here on the top and separating them out into their own strip. So, mark scene. Um, probably the same thing for the teeth below. You can see there's a ring here. Just going all the way up the tooth. It's tricky because I collapsed it so much on the tooth thing. Actually, yeah, I take this out and it's, it's connected. Just double click that ring. Looks like it wraps. I think that's a contiguous ring all the way around the mouth. And we'll go ahead and mark that. Looks like it's all kind of buried and hidden in there. Now we just need to split out the teeth uh, where they join into the gun. So we'll just double click. And try to find this. Let's say this is exposed. Could be gone to there, but I do that and kind of wrap around. Maybe I'll do that instead. So double click. I'm just doing the teeth individually in order to um because they're probably just gonna be wide or something close and I can just lay them out in a little tiny part. It'll be fairly flat color. Okay. Can't tell if that's Yeah, 
I see it joins it. Okay, so there's the mouth. Probably should select this nose. And mark it so that it will unwrap. I'm going to leave it as a single mark. See? This will be a little weird here, but I think it'll be all right. We'll see. Perhaps let's do a little clip here. Let's see. Let's see why I'm putting these little um, corner pieces on it. Basically, that's so that it won't tighten up here. It'll un it'll unwrap like it, it uh, if you're cutting seams on pants. So now for the ears, I'm going to just cut out the entire thing. Inner and outer. So that see. When you get a lot of topology that kind of caves in on itself, you're just not going to be able to get a good unwrap unless you cut that out for its own eyes. So now this outer ear part probably needs to become its own because this isn't going to unwrap very well either. See? Now I have the ear split up into two parts. trick will be um, how I need to unwrap the top of the head and the bottom because like this is sort of two and it needs to split somewhere. So I could split it along the top of the snout or along the bottom of the jaw. Probably the bottom of the jaw is the best. See? That way it'll kind of unwrap around the top. I think that's it. Uh, although I'm going to get some weird collision. Maybe. Let's see how it works here. This here may close up on it. We'll just try it though. If you want to compare, all you have to do, if you want to just see how it starts to unwrap, just select a face and then hit that bracket key and notice that now it does select just that island because I've already gone and marked the seams there. And if we do um, UV unwrap and go into UV editing, we can see how it unwraps here. So this is the pelt of how this uh, texture map will unwrap. And it looks actually pretty good because that's where the ears would be. They did a good job of laying it out relatively flat. This is the mouth. Um, you know, just to show you for grins how what this line is doing here. I'm going to select and get rid of it and then do the same thing. So clear seam. So now if I do select by that and then hit the bracket to select everything. And then do a UV unwrap. Watch out, changes. So basically, because there's no, we're not giving it any instruction on where to split a seam, it tries to keep everything together, and you end up getting a really small detail at the nose and this huge UV space around the neck. So that's just not good. So let's go back and. Now what I want to try is to see, because I kind of want the head, that bracket, and the ears. I'll select one frame on each thing that I want to unwrap. And the mouth, teeth. I'm going to make a 
UV map for each face. Just hit select, make sure I get everything. I didn't get this in it loaded. Or here. Or here. And now I think I got everything selected on the head. Make sure I got all the teeth. Now if you hit UV map, it lays out like this. Um, so these, these are ears, ear parts. What's this? It's probably the nose. Oh, that's the gun line. That's fine. Here's the nose. That's the top of the mouth, and you can see some weirdness going on here uh, in terms of the split. These points right here are overlapped, but you can correct that pretty easily. Or we could try to fix the split, join it up, but I'm thinking that it probably doesn't uh, join easily to that. These are teeth. We can fix the teeth in a minute. I'm just going through and looking to see what's weird. Mm, not sure what these are. Probably teeth too. So it looks like the teeth are the only weird part. This is the nose. So you notice I've got this split right here. And that's just so that this opens up instead of trying to come to a point and pinch. Um, yeah, looks pretty good. So it looks like the teeth are the main issue. This is the tongue, I believe. So let's try splitting the tongue down the middle so we get two parts because we're getting a lot of pinching and distortion right there at the tip. So select the edge. Smaller. Just adding the seam down the middle. Do a select like this, and we should be able to get it all. So if I go to uh, x ray mode and then just select my face across all that, that way I know I get the mouth and hit. So I did x ray in order to make sure I got everything selected in the mouse rather than doing having to do all that individual selection. All right, so now if I go to unwrap, UV. Unwrap. So when I do this, it's a little bit better. You do this unwrap, notice that I get this option for angle based or conformal. So if you do conformal, it's um, usually gives better results than conformal while being somewhat slower. So there's not that much of a difference, but I kind of like the results for conformal better than angle based. It basically gives me more a better layout for the UVs, I think. Uh, just looking at things. I like the space, the way it breaks it up. Angle base seems to waste a lot of space. So we're going to go with conformal for now. Um, now I need to fix these teeth. Notice that all the teeth are kind of collapsing on us, each other, and that's because we don't really have a place to for them to unwrap. They're just it's trying to spread them out the best it can. We didn't really give it any instructions for how to split them apart. So let me go and zoom in on that. Zoom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line along the outside edge of the teeth that should help them unwrap. So I'm just going to mark C. Usually on the inside, too, going all the way to the point. 
Action. Unleash. These two. Probably on this one, I'm going to do one there. And and then come off these two points. Should give it plenty to unwrap with. And for these little teeth on the bottom of the mouth, I can just go this. that even at the middle. I'm just trying to give it plenty of ways to unwrap the teeth. And again, we'll do the top using this one. Select by UV, face, drag across, select any of the body. Go ahead and hit the uh, bracket key or select and more select point, which is the bracket. Um, turn off the X ray mode. Now, if we do project map, notice all of our teeth unwrap well. We're still getting some weirdness on this part. Okay. This is the lower mouth, and it kind of collapses on itself a lot here. So I'm wondering if these two be done better with the angular maybe let's see we we'll hit bracket for those and the unwrap i've still got everything selected over here so Making sure that I get everything. So that's this lower part of the mouth, and the way it looks, you can just tell something wrong on it. Um, so let's do maybe another way to do this one is if we look at it from the point top. Turn on. Might get a better projection this way. Let's see what the um, UV unwrap. For some reason, it just doesn't want to project the same across both. So, what I can do is go UV project from view. It gives me a nice um, unwrap this way, and I can see where it overlaps. Oops. Looks like there's a double face. Can't tell. Um, so it looks like these front teeth somehow are not continuously right. Or there's some interfaces, it looks like, right there. See? Not be able to see that. Reset the view and make this point over So when you see bright, uh, brighter orange when you're looking at it through the uh, X ray and the UVs, it just means you're seeing a back face through it. So the fact that in this middle line right here, this 
we see that there is a face inside here. It means that there's it's a join here, and we don't we're not getting the unwrap in there. So if we just delete these faces, and this face. And that was just where we did the extrusion, and uh, they were on the line. Let me go to. to Might have been why our jaw it was all weird in the end wrap. Let's see. Uh, if we, let's just select everything again and uh, get one more shot at doing the entire head. It's bracket to select everything. Do the editing. And let's see. Let's see. The, we still get some weirdness. It's better. For some reason, we'll get this weird uh, angle face. That's much better. Yeah, angle base actually is better. All right, now, <laughs> that was a lot of work just for the face, but it's a pretty good face on that. The body will be a lot easier. So for the body, we're going to do separate materials for each one. So um, let's go ahead and apply those materials as we go. And we can tell what we've also mapped that way. So if you go to the top view, select your top-down view here, hit bracket, so you get your UV map here. We will assign your materials. I'm going to assign a new one. Uh, let's just make a new one and call it um, head. I'm going to assign it to those faces. I'm going to give it a color. And turn off that. And we'll just make it blue for now. Uh, this color in shaded mode. So notice that it looks different. There's the blue. So that's our head. Um, now for the body, we can just do one material as well. So let's do. Let's see. I don't want to break this up. Let's go ahead and continue selecting these your edge rings. So we're going to do mark seam there. And here. Same for my finger. Mark seam there. I'm going to go ahead and do that for this as well. Oops. All of these edges. the same thing and just each one of these joints in the fingers so that we get some nice straight unwrapping. 
Uh, do I do the same thing there too? Let's do that. I don't want to have this bend and I don't want to have to straighten it out, so I'm trying to associate. I mean, it's not going to be great to have a seam there. It'll be all right though. Then, well, we don't really have the seam where we can split the body uh, up, so we're going to do it along the seam of the wing. We'll go along this part. This way, the wing itself will cover up. Now, if we select the top and the bottom the bracket, we should get the total selection. And if we do UV unwrap, we get this uh, multi unwrap. It's true, it's a single island. Oh, I'm just an edge here. Uh, that's why it's weird. Again, select one on each, hit bracket, select them all, UV. Now they're all nice and straight. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. But I just want to select, you don't want to double click because if you do, you'll select everything around and create scene for you don't want them. So yeah, I'm just doing a scene to there. Alright, then we can select these. Bracket and the unwrap. You see how it'll unwrap them as straight as it can. Um, do the same thing here for the legs. Create a seam or create a seam here. And from behind. feet and the essentially the hands left doing that. Um, in order to do that, we probably want to treat the feet as separate and the hands as separate. So we're going to do a line along here. to unwrap across. And let's just do it down the same edge. Okay, that'll unwrap the foot. And do the other foot. Put F to zoom in. Edge. Essentially, just select all the way out along the toe edge like that. And that should unwrap. Let's see what it does. The other things we're going to want to put in, we're going to split these off in a second. Let's 
machine. So I got the, ed the toes so that they should unwrap, but it was going to be a little weird because of the claw. Let's see if we need to split that apart. But now these are, they're joined together here at these inner seams, so we need to select those. So rather than me going and doing the, everything on the other side of the foot, I'm going to go ahead and just try, see if this works out on this side. Select this and then hit bracket. So I get the foot set up and then do UV on that and see what happens. It looks actually really good. So then I can go over here and do the same thing on the other side. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and do these individual bones as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is just center line these joints, double click. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, since we have straight edges between the joints anyway, we don't have to split these, but it'll help with the unwrap and make it much straighter and allow everything to fit together in a nicer way, uh, just automatically. If we go ahead and mark these seams so that they split um, and then unwrap like a tube as opposed to... Uh, some sort of curved object. So I'm going to treat this like the finger again. Unwrap that edge, mark C here. And mark C. So we'll do these inner finger joints. Like those. I want to create a line that will allow for a top hand and bottom, just so it's easy to unwrap. Let's see for that. So I'm going to put here. And I do one of these like I did with the toes. See. Okay. Should oh, we still have to um, pick an edge on these to run there? Probably along the wing line is the best. So it'll go out the entire width of the bone and back, joins up there, that's nice. But what we want to do is make sure that we don't select all the way across here that we, and accidentally create a seam that we didn't want to create up there. So we'll mark seam for those. Uh, but the problem is if I do that, it unwraps, um, it doesn't unwrap like a cylinder. Whereas if I go across the top like that, it will, because it's only putting one seam around the entire width of the bone. Does that make sense? Oh, let's see. Let me go check the wingtips to make sure that those will unwrap okay. Let's see. 
and just make it so it unfolds all the way to the point. Again, what I'm doing here is instead of it sort of pinching at the end, make it so that it all unwraps. And this one. that should unwrap pretty well. And again, I'm just going to do this side so that I can test it before I go and do the other side. So if you select all of that, make sure we have everything hit. Bracket to select. We've got just the parts that we want to mount this time. Then UV unwrap. Need a really clean straight edge unwrap here. So that's all good. And then you just come under the um, UV tool or the UV win editing window and then do um, pack islands. Here we want to select all of these, sorry. UV pack islands. And then everything is laid out nicely. Um, probably can do this one and rotate it a little bit. Let's see. I'm just checking to see if anything's overlapping. This could probably be rotated. Illustrator. Oh, the fingers are huge though. So, what we can do is if we saw from this view, we'll do it automatically so like you can see where these finger points are just as big as an arm. They shouldn't be, they're, they're too small for that. So, if we just do unwrap, then everything lays out nice. And we get the proper proportions for things. Um, yeah. that's okay. All right, so I'm going to say that's good enough for now. Let's go um, apply a new material called Bat Body to that. Or actually, we'll just make this material, call it that body. And give it color. And give it something like an orange. Okay. Now we can show our mesh and show hide. Reveal hidden so we get our wings back. And we will select our wings. Uh, just go to the top view. View. Point top. Zoom out. And then we're going to project from view. That way we get um, 
Everything laid out the way we want. Probably going to select the bat body here. Let's see. The wings. I'm going to zoom in and split out these edges so that. Let me hide the bat body here. Hold on. Let's go back, hide our wings, select everything, mesh, and I'd selected. Actually, yeah, I'd selected. I want to make a, a vertex group or a um, group which is the bat body so I can select it and then hide it by having to do the uh, mass or the uh, selection that I've been doing with the, uh, so I just, I don't know if you noticed, I turned on x-rays, so I could select through everything, now I've got the entire body, that body selected. Um, under vertex groups, I can make a new vertex group, call this that body, assign that, under mesh, Hide. We go ahead and select the back body and then hide that. Mesh, hide, selected. Oops, it selected everything. Oh, I had them accidentally, so I just want to, uh, I accidentally had the wings selected. So if I just select that body, select mesh. Hide selected. Oh, hide selected. Now I can go and select these edges. So that I can uh, Mark them as seams. I want it to split along these edge seams. We fix the overlapping edges from the stack. Just see the back at all. Now the main thing is to go and deselect using control on the edges that I don't want to select. Maybe shift. Yeah, shift select these so that they're not. Um, this one selected there. And this one. So we can mark it as a scene. I don't want this to be a seam, so I can deselect that and deselect that. And select these. Select these. Let's double check. Looks pretty good. Now I can mark these as a seam. I also want to mark down the middle as a seam. Alright. And back to our projection. So if I do Let's try just doing an unwrap and see what happens here. So UV unwrap. So we got our bones. Yeah, it's not great. Um, let's 
Okay, so instead of that, then it will be UV project from view. And let's see if we get the individual islands this way. So we can rearrange. Let's see, it's all one island now. So what we can do is Not seems from islands, but there's no way to cut it on the seams. You could, if we had a bunch of islands, you could create seams from islands so that it marks it so you could redo it. But what we can do to get these individual islands is just do it this way. So select bracket. Um, let's see if that will separate it out. I doubt it. But if we so now if we do everything, hey, it does. Okay, so the individual islands are there. Um, Right. They're over here, so we just need to select that. Hopefully this makes sense. The reason I'm doing it this way so that we can arrange these or pack them in a way that makes more sense. And a single part. It's okay though. Move that down there. This part makes less, doesn't really matter as much because uh, it's interior to the, to the uh, body. Oh, that's just where I leave it. Okay. Good. All right. So now if we select all of these and pack islands. We get a, an attempt at the uh, wrapping of the wings. Rotate and it packs it slightly better. Yeah, this will work. Um, just want to shift things around a little bit to help.
figuring out ways to reposition. I don't know if the mouse in the least space. It's pretty good. Mm. It's probably as good as I can do right now. I can rotate and this orientation doesn't really matter. It's probably as we could do. Okay, uh, it's not great, but it's as good as we can do for these wings, I think. So now we have material walls. Let's apply a sign in that one. We'll give it a different color just so we know that it's right. Uh, we can lose these two. Object to So now we have a bat body, a wing material, and a head material. So we'll have three textures. We could, if we look at the bat body, um, selecting its vertex group. Let's be in edit mode. It's a mesh split. Or, yeah. Do hidden. So if we look at select that body, yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to do separate textures for each um, for the head and for the bikes. The head's the most important part. All right, so. Anyway, that's UV mapping. Let me uh, just show you how you can check the UV maps, another way of checking it. Go to modeling now. Um, in shaded mode. So if you want to check to see how these things are wrapped, you go into each material. You can just apply a checker uh, texture, this checker texture like that and give each one its own kind of color to double check. You can change the scale so you can see how it unwraps. It's not great, but it's okay. Um, same thing for the body. If 
need a checker texture. Let me get this red. Scale it up. Um, all we can do is right now it's not coming from the UVs, it's just projecting independently. I'll show you how to make that work on the UVs in a second. Do checker texture. I'm going to leave this one in the purple. You can see, the way you can tell that it's doing just a universal projection of the, U, of the check, uh, it's not doing a UV projection. The way we're getting this wobbly line here, it's not. There's no way that's in the uh, UV map the way we've unmapped it. So the way you can check each one of these is if you go into shading, uh, for each one, notice it's just a te checker texture and it's not getting any kind of uh, vector or anything from uh, where it should be. Object. So let's go and save this. Um, all we have to do is add a vector and a mapping from that vector into the vector. And then, no, it's still not working. We need to add a input and extra coordinate. And we want to use the UV for that vector. And now you see where we get a nice check map. Same thing for the other materials. Uh, go body. Actually, we can just go back to the link and copy these two coordinates. C, go to the body and paste. And just connect it up. And head, paste, and connect that up. Now we get, you can see the UV mapping that we've applied. And it actually looks pretty good. Okay, so hopefully that helps to explain UV mapping or BAT. Um, in the next video, we will uh, apply a, a rig, a uh, simplified rig, but a rig that allows you to flap the wings and We'll talk about um, whether or not we want to use bones for intermittent bones in order to take care of the kind of cloth folding of the fingers or if we want to use actual cloth. Um, so if you have any questions, just paste them in the um, comments. Uh, I'd love to see you next time.